Hi guys, uh, welcome again to Astronomy Lectures. I was thinking of doing something a little bit different this time. Last time we were talking about light and speed and distances and a lot of people emailed me or wrote in the comment section that they're not sure how we can be sure of the speed of light. So apparently there's a very good way of checking yourselves in your houses the speed of light. And all you need to have is a plate with chocolate um, preferably a long chocolate bar, but I didn't have a long chocolate bar and from past experiences I needed a very long chocolate bar. Um, if I have time, I, maybe I'll add the sections that show why the failed experiments, but for now we're gonna have this and we're gonna hope that this will work. A plate and a microwave and um, about one minute of calculations. So uh, without further ado, let's start. Okay, so I have my plate and my chocolate right here and my microwave and we're gonna do the experiment right now. But before we do it, this is one thing you need to know. We had to take off the plate that turns um, in the microwave. The reason is that we want the chocolate to be standing still and not rotating. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put this plate and the bunch of chocolate in it inside the microwave. Alright. What's gonna happen when I'm turning this microwave the waves of the microwave are going to pass from one side to the other. Okay, if the plate is turning, which usually happens, it's going to heat up the entire thing. But we don't want it to happen. We want to see where the wave hits the chocolate. And then we can calculate, hopefully, the speed of light. So, let's start. While the chocolate is melting nicely inside the microwave oven, let's talk about what is light. We all know that a light is a form of electromagnetic wave. And in order to know the speed, we need to know the wavelength and its frequency. A wavelength is a cycle, and frequency means cycles per second. So if I can figure out what is the wavelength and I can figure out what is the frequency, then I can find the speed of the wave. And since this is a electromagnetic wave, uh, which is just the same as light, I can figure out the speed of light. I already know the frequency because it says so on my microwave oven. It's 2.45 gigahertz. And all I'm left to do is finding out the wavelength. And when I do, I'll be able to calculate what is the speed of light. As we can see here, the wavelength is the distance between two peaks. So in an ideal experiment, I would have to, to measure the distance between two peaks and I'll have the wavelength. But this is not ideal. This is inside my microwave oven. And I can't really check the distance between two peaks because the microwave oven is too small. But what we are going to figure out is the distance between one peak and one low, um, which is shown in this picture as well. And when we do that, we figure out half of the wavelength. And if we multiply it by two, we'll get the full wavelength. And um, if I can do it in my own house, in my own microwave oven, think about what real scientists with real labs can do. So let's uh, go back to the chocolate. All right, we're done and the chocolate is melted. As you can see right here, we have our melted chocolate and we're going to start calculating in a second, um, hopefully before I eat it. All right, so we're back with from uh, the microwave, and as you can see here, my chocolate has melted. And it melted in two points, just like we wanted. Now it seems like we have a very long point of entry and exit of the wave, but in fact, all we're interested in is, is at this point, and this point, which is where the wave exited and entered again. These two, Okay, don't interest us because the wave is diagonal, you know, and we're looking for the exit and entry point. So this one and this one, we're going to measure the distance between them. All right, we're talking about these two. And of course, I have my ruler here with centimeters because we're talking physics. So we're doing everything in centimeters and we're measuring. So we have the zero here. So we're measuring from this point right here to this point right here. And we have 
about six centimeters. That is the distance. There we go. I'd say even six and a half. So everything we do here is, you know, home conditions. So we're going to take a careful measurement and I'm going to take it on the broad side. So we have about six and a half centimeters, as you can see right here. There we go. Six and a half. I don't know if you can see it. Six and a half centimeters. Now, the fun part. We're going to go to the calculations and I promise you it's not going to take long. So we're done with the experiment and now the fun part, the calculation. So we had six and a half centimeters, which we multiply by two to get the full wavelength. And we multiply all that with the frequency, which was 2,450,000,000 cycles per second, which is 2.45 gigahertz. So when we multiply everything together, we get the staggering number of 31,850,000,000 centimeters per second. That sounds a bit high, but uh, the reason is because we calculated everything in centimeters. When we convert to meters, all of a sudden we have 318,500,000 meters per second. And that sounds a lot more reasonable for the speed of light, which is very close to, actually. In fact, in this experiment, we only had 6.3% error. And that's pretty cool for a home experiment. You don't have to trust anyone else. You don't have to read some scientific paper to understand the speed of light. You just need to try it out for yourself. And most importantly, you need to think. Because this is the greatest fun in physics. It's all around you. And if you think about it, you can find out things for yourself. And the next time anyone asks you, how do we know the speed of light? Just take a bar of chocolate and show them. Oh my god, this is the best experiment ever. Who said physics isn't fun? How many people want to kick some ass? I do, I do. And how many people are sick of holding back? Gigahertz. The, the gigahertz.